I guarantee you these next 20 or 30 minutes could change your life. And I want you to think about what are the two most important days of your life? The day that you were born and the day you figure out your calling, your purpose, your why. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Everybody with me? All right. Why is it important to have a strong purpose in your life? My purpose is to inspire and connect others to achieve extraordinary things. And I ask myself every day, who did I inspire? Who did I connect? And who is going to achieve something extraordinary in their life journey because I played a small part in it? So when uh, I was being introduced, said that I had worked for four presidents of both parties, which is true, but I had an interesting experience in that the president of the country I lived in for 20 years, Panama, Mireya Moscoso, was in Miami watching TV, and I popped up as this crazy entrepreneur from Panama that she didn't know about. So she asked me to come to Panama and get the key to the city. So I went to Panama and I invited my mom, my wife, my kids went. And one of those strange coincidences is that my mother was a seventh grade public school science teacher for 22 years. And when we got a clear security and went into their version of the White House, there was three ladies of different ages and by coincidence, they had all had my mother as a school teacher in seventh grade. And when they saw her, because they didn't know that I was her son, they went nuts like a rock star just walked in. And they started screaming and yelling. They immediately went into the president's office and started telling the president how my mother had changed their life. And in about 20 minutes, knock on the door and all the photographers come in and the president gets up well, the key to the city for the teacher. <laughs> so it was one of those times where, you know, my ego couldn't have fit into this place here. And I was very proud of my mom. And later, you know, having a conversation with her, she looked at me and said, son, this is for you to remember that your life will never be measured by all the money you have, the possessions you accumulate, it's not power, it's none of that. Your life will be measured by how many hearts you touch. And that had a turning point in my life. And I looked at myself and started a journey around purpose, about being humble, about turning my gifts to benefit others. And I hope today that that journey will inspire all of you, whether you're an individual trying to figure out your why and your purpose, or you're leading a company or in an organization, that you can put yourself and that organization on a purpose journey. Your purpose needs to have a direction. Where are you going? We're not hamsters running around and around and around. And if your life seems that way, you need to take a deep look at it. People with purpose have direction, and people with purpose move the world. Think of Mandela, of Gandhi, of Steve Jobs. Think of incredible men and women, Martin Luther King, and what they've done because they've been grounded in purpose. And the research from the medical community shows that people with purpose live longer. If you read the blue zones, seven zones in the world where people live over the age of 100, the common theme besides what they eat is they have a purpose. If you read Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, a gentleman that survived the horrors of the Holocaust, in seven days he wrote why he survived and others because they had a purpose. 
The patron saint of purpose is Richard Branson, who has formed a B team and the elders, and he's catalyzed various groups around the world. And he believes that in this world, there can be no real profit unless you have a well-defined purpose where companies are stepping into it for the benefit of the planet and the benefit of humanity. And Jim Collins, who wrote the book From Good to Great, discovered that the greatest companies in the world and all the research that he did were companies that had a clearly defined purpose and they knew what their why was, why they existed. I'm living my purpose today in a nonprofit called Alpha, the Association of Latino Professionals for America. And what we do, we're in 160 universities and growing and 44 professional chapters, is our purpose is to connect Latino leaders for impact. And this heart here shows the process of how we take these interconnected circles of what you're good at, what your passion is, what you can bring to the world that provides value and your vocation, and we look at the center of it, and if you can step into that purpose, you get such energy, and you're in a zone like some great hockey players you have in Canada who said you have to be thinking not where the puck is, but where it's going. I believe, I don't believe in coincidences as all those coincidences happened when I went to Panama. I believe a coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous in our life. And when you put your vibrations into the world from your brain, which is like a radio station that transmits and receives, all these little coincidences are going to happen. One of them happened to me today that I'll talk to you about. I've had an opportunity to work with Richard Branson. This is a picture of us in South Africa, where at the end of this year, we're gonna be launching a purpose constellation to provide the tools to entrepreneurs to individuals and to large corporations to step into their higher purpose. And the gentlemen that are behind the breakout project have coincidentally designed a technology platform in the cloud with a Toronto-based company that I've been searching for for a year. So we will be collaborating with them as well. You're already having a huge impact and you didn't even know it. We're trying to smart, spark minds, we're trying to innovate, and we're really trying to get everyone to find what is your purpose and step into it. If you get an email from me, you'll often see this at the bottom of my email. Changing the world begins with a small group of people who simply refuse to accept the unacceptable. And I encourage all of you to do that. A month ago, in April, I was with Richard on Necker Island, where he lives two-thirds of the year, and we were having a leadership conference on purpose. And of course, I had to put the picture there so you could see what it looked like from my room because it is so cold here. We're, we're going to do one of these in Necker Island. So one of the individuals that I invited was Jim Stengel. Jim Stengel's important because he was a young marketing officer at Procter & Gamble, which is a $220 billion Fortune 50 company, and he took a couple of brands and he turned them around by focusing on purpose. And in 2000, the company and the stock of Procter & Gamble was going south fast, they brought back a CEO, A.G. Laffley, and he picked this young man and made him chief marketing officer, 7,000 people, an $8 billion budget. And he said, okay, buddy, I saw you did it with those two. Try it with our other 20 brands. And what he did over the next year, eight years was nothing short of spectacular. He first went to a WPP group company and 
they did research with a university in uh, California, and they researched 50,000 brands in 31 countries in 380 different categories. And the results were crystal clear. Successful companies articulate a clear purpose, and what it does is it acts as a talent magnet in bringing resources of people who are passionate about that mission and that company and whose uh, alignment around values, and it also attracts customers. And that is the beauty of purpose. And his conclusion was that businesses that have a clear purpose substantially and significantly outperform their competitors. And the research showed that there was generally five buckets of fundamental human values that improve people's lives by eliciting joy, by enabling connection, by inspiring exploration, by evoking pride, or impacting society in a positive and fundamental way. Jim wrote a book. I want to leave you with some books. I'm a big believer that you should read and learn these things. His book is called Grow, and you can read about the research and also really deep down, do a deep dive into these companies. And I want to show uh, one of the inspirations for Jim, besides Jim Collins, is a gentleman uh, by the name of Roy Spence. And he has a great book that I also encourage you to read, and it's called It's Not What You Sell, it's what you stand for. And I would say this is the basis for the purpose revolution. And then a book called Cause. And the millennial generation, 80 million strong in the US and globally much larger, they want to live a life of purpose and passion. I have three daughters and a son. I have four young millennials of my own. And because they don't want to just come to work and work for money, they want to bring their passion to work, they are forcing companies who need to survive by recruiting millennials to align themselves with purpose. And we're going to talk a little bit more on how the organizations are changing the paradigm. So it used to be the paradigm was you're going to have a mission, you're going to have a vision, and you're going to have goals. And every year, they kind of change the goals. But that doesn't work anymore. What the companies of today, whether it's Airbnb or Nike or Apple, they have a purpose. They have an ambition. They have real values, not the same values that every other company. And they tend to be quirky. And those values act as magnets to attract talent. And then they have a clear strategy, a real strategy. And I would say 99% of companies don't have a strategy. A strategy is about making choices, and most companies don't want to make choices, and they get eaten for lunch. And the individual that first came out with values, I'm going to show you a video when Steve Jobs was fired, and he came back to Apple. He this is a short two-minute video that I want to show you that he was really ahead of his time. Marketing is about values. This is a very complicated world. It's a very noisy world. And we're not going to get a chance to get people to remember much about us. No company is. And so we have to be really clear on what we want them to know about us. Now, Apple fortunately, is one of the half a dozen best brands in the whole world. Right up there with Nike, Disney, Coke, Sony. It is one of the greats of the greats. Not just in this country, but all around the globe. And, but, but, but even a great brand needs investment in caring if it's going to retain its relevance and vitality. And the Apple brand has clearly suffered from neglect in this area in the last few years. And we need to bring it back. The way to do that is not to talk about speeds and fees. 
it's not to talk about MIPS and megahertz. It's not to talk about why we're better than Windows. The dairy industry tried for 20 years to convince you that milk was good for you. It's a lie, but they tried anyway. And <laughs> the sales were going like this. And then they tried Got Milk, and the sales are going like this. Got Milk doesn't even talk about the product. Matter of fact, it focuses on the absence of the product. <laughs> but, but, but the best example of all, and, and one of the greatest jobs of, of marketing in the, that the universe has ever seen, is Nike. Remember, Nike sells a commodity. They sell shoes. And yet, when you think of Nike, you feel something different than a shoe company. In their ads, as you know, they don't ever talk about the product. They don't ever tell you about their air soles and why they're better than Reeboks air soles. What does Nike do in their advertising? They, they honor great athletes, and they honor great athletics. That's who they are. That's what they are about. Apple spends a fortune on advertising. You'd never know it. <laughs> It was a grainy video, but it goes, and the sound wasn't great, but it shows you the brilliance of Steve Jobs in creating a culture and a movement that attracted the best talent in the world. And I want to show you a case study of not an Apple, not an Airbnb, a company that most and many would think of stodgy and maybe even a little boring, although they're not. And that is an accounting and consulting firm called Ernst & Young, EY. So they started on this purpose journey in 2012. This is what their brand looked like and their tagline. And they changed it to this, building a better working world. That is what they figured they were about. And very clearly, they said, this is our purpose. This is their ambition, and they had some goals that were quantitative and qualitative, and they had a very clear, short strategy that everybody could remember and explain. And one of the partners who had been there for many, many years said for the first time in 28 years, someone explained to me on one page where we are, who we are, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. And that's tremendously inspiring. Once they knew that, they turned internally and they started talking to their people and others about what they were all about. They took out full page ads in the Financial Times, which was a manifesto of what building a better working world actually meant. They got creative in all their offices globally. Anywhere you went, that's what they were talking about. And they start talking to their clients. And in the next phase, which was external, they started thinking about how do we take this message to others all around and make you think better. And what happened if you look at the results of actually when people started joining the conversation and they talked about entrepreneurship, about empowering women, people got really motivated to come work at their company. And these have been the results, which is kind of the proof in the pudding. They were growing at 3 to 4%. Today, they're growing at 9%. Their employee base grew from 145,000 to 230,000 in a very short time. They're a talent magnet. They were ranked in the 20s. Now, they're ranked third globally in a uh, group that measures their competition. And in terms of best places to work, they went from 59 to 29. That is the power of purpose in a corporation that you wouldn't really think about as being on the leading edge. And this gentleman also came. He worked with, and this is a great book too, with President Obama and then the former first lady on what are they gonna do for the next 20 years. And a lot of what they're doing now is a consequence of his work. And it's a lot about, for you, as you think about what your purpose is, how do your unique gifts, talents, and passion answer a personal need in the world, in your community? That is what purpose is about. Always have fun. 
when you're doing uh, your thing out there. Keep that in mind. What is your purpose, ambition, and what is your strategy to make this planet and humanity a better place for everyone? I want to end with this quote that you will also see if you get an email from me these days. And I will leave you with this inspiring quote. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that it was within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Ladies and gentlemen, go find your purpose and make a huge impact in the world. Thank you very much.